Well, first of all, I, I would like to thank the, organizi the org organizer of this event, Hawking staff and Matthew Andrew in particular for the, the invitation and the pleasure, the honor to be among scientists and specialists in computer science, statistics, applied mathematics, etc. So my point of view will be um, quite different. Um, it will be that of a different kind of science, a of scientist. A lawyer, mainly an academic one, specialized in personal data protection schemes with a specific approach to health data as uh, sensitive data. Health data are a little much more than personal data in the law, the constitutions, and in many international treaties on protection of fund fundamental rights. Health is part of the person stricto sensu, and the law will tend very soon to consider this data, the health data, as elements or products of the person itself with the same due protection. So that's the reason why, although in federated learning the main goal of this technique is to be in conformity with the rules of data protection and private life, in particular the GPDR, the question of compliance is still in debate for this particular kind of data mining. And we have to compose with specific questions and ethical issues. As we will see uh, later, things are a bit more complex than it is for the vast category of personal data involved in the huge question of privacy compliance in artificial intelligence. But this is not the only issue. International property rights and above all the contractual relations between the players differ significantly between centralized data mining and federated learning. And the question is whether it, uh, this is a new legal and ethical framework, framework for federated learning. So, uh, Let's start with some background information to understand the legal issues raised by these technologies. Uh, by uh, the context, uh, we'll see, I understand two points. First, the regulation around data and artificial intelligence in general. And second, the ethical issues directly related to professional practices and especially, but not exclusively, with health data. He, well, uh, on data-related regulation in general and in the specific case of federated learning, nothing really happened by chance. When federated learning technology emerged in 2017, it was a year before the GDPR came into effect and a few years before China's data protection law, the same year, at 2021, this year, now, at the same time, the Artificial Intelligence Act in Europe was on track in EU institutions. And it can be noted that China's intervention in data regulation is based less on a desire to protect individual liberties than to regulate a market and operators who risk competing with the later by analyzing data without state control. In these considerations, if this consideration of state control, of public control are not absent from the European legislator, it is necessary to agree that the whole European system is based on a theory of fundamental rights, which is crucial when it comes to interpreting this text that come from it. In comparison, the US regulations, with the exception of those relating to products and to health data, seem very sparse. The recent Californian regulation is very modest in this respect. But one should not forget the enormous resources of American constitutional law on these issues. So if we now focus on the GPDR, the GDPR, let's start by quick recalling the principles 
on which the European regulation is based, which I can recall is extraterritorial in application, not only for Europe. To point out the issues and the necessary adaptations in federated learning technique. As you can see, we have six principles in the regulation. Fairness and lawfulness. Lawfulness in the, yes, it's under the GPDR, controllers can authorize the processing of data simply, can't authorize, sorry, the processing of data simply because the data is available. They must be able to demonstrate the data processing falls under one of the six law, lawful bases outlined in Article 6 of the regulation in Europe. These uh, six bases are consent, contractual background, legal obligation, vital interest, public task, and legitimate interest. One of them, one of the six lawful bases must be fulfilled. So you need to identify and state the lawful basis that applies to each data category processed. It's true that fairness is more ambiguous, is a more ambiguous term, but from a legal perspective, it is useful to consider fairness in the context of good faith. And processing data in good faith refers to using data in a way that you believe to be honest and legal. And transparency requires you to be not only lawful and fair in your data processing activities, but need you to let data subjects know what your processes include. And it's a critical way in the GDPR to, to fulfill the requirement to have a privacy policy. And the privacy policy needs to share core details about data practices, including the category of data, lawful basis for data collection, how you intend to use the data, how long you will keep the data, details of third-party relationships, whether the data leaves the EU, and privacy police, pol policy needs to match the reading ability of your target data subjects. As you can see, we have also the principle very important for federated learning of data minimization. The era of collecting massive amounts of data unnecessary is over. To address the issue of catch-all data processing tactics, Article 5 contains a principle on data minimization, which is crucial in federated learning. Article 5 of the GPDR uh, say that data controllers may process data strictly using methods that are, I quote, adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purposes for which they are processed. If you can comp complete your core processing activities without the data, then you should never even go as far to collect it, much less process the data. Data minimization is a core, is a crucial in the technique in uh, artificial intelligence. Accuracy of data is also very important. Article 5.1.D is clear when it says your personal data should, to the best of your ability, be accurate and where necessary, kept up to date. Every reasonable step must be taken to ensure that personal data that are inaccurate, having regard to the purposes for which they are processed, are erased or rectified without delay. As a result, it is a call to action for every data controller. And, uh, for data storage limits, principle five in Article 5, say that the data storage principle places legal limits on how long data can remain in your database. 
And finally, integrity and confidentiality is uh, defined as the process in a manner that ensures appropriate security of the data, of the personal data, including protection against unauthorized or un unlawful processing and against, and against accidental loss, destruction or damage using appropriate technical or organization organizational measures. The first few principles related to security um, are uh, related to integrity and confidentiality indirectly. For example, data minimization practices lower data subjects risk of exposure in the event of a data breach. So it's very important that, as we can see in the in the regulation, in the EU regulation, in Article 32, for instance, that data protection by design, like federated learning, uh, refers to a, a design structure that builds privacy features and technologies into your project for, from inception or the initial design. That means following the data minimization principle as well as adding the appropriate technical data protection procedures like encryption and anonymization. So, in the context uh, of, uh, um, of data, of, of federated uh, learning, uh, compliance uh, with transparency and accountability in data protection by design is really very important. Transparency is full information provided to individuals in an accessible style and manner. Accountability is all organizations involved take red demonstrable responsibility using personal data. And uh, in the context of this uh, protection by design, is the data protection by design proposed by the techniques of federated learning. Federated learning limits the personal training data used to build the, mach the machine learning model to what is adequate, relevant, and necessary to achieve the purposes for which those data are processed. The data holder does not transfer the raw personal data used to train the machine learning model to another entity. So, training a model under the federated learning um, tends to avoid the duplication of personal data and contributes to reducing the risk. Reducing the risk, but the risk still exists, as we'll see later, uh, and as we can see uh, with the, um, uh, the other presentation um, on the morning. So, federated learning facilitated compliance, facilitated compliance with the principle of proposed limitation of Article 5 of the GTBR, and the resulting models are uh, less vulnerable to membership interference attacks that models trained in a, centralized, in, in a centralized fashion, like in the classical data, um, data learning. So, it's important to know that some principle of artificial intelligence in EU regulation uh, are on track. The European Parliament has undertaken a considerable amount of work in the area of artificial intelligence. In October, it adopted a number of resolutions related to artificial intelligence, including ethics, liability, and, it's very important, copyright. In 2021, those were followed by resolutions in criminal matters, education, culture, audiovisual sector, and the European Parliament resolution on a framework of ethical aspect of artificial intelligence, robotics, and related technologies, specifically recommends to the commissions to propose legislative action to harness the opportunities and benefits of artificial intelligence, but also to ensure protection of ethical principle. What sort of ethical principle in European uh, regulation? Non-discriminatory non access to data and the training of artificial intelligence algorithms on those 
data sets in a privacy preser preserving, secure, timely, transparent, trustworthy manner and with an appropriate institution, institutional governance. Relevant competent authorities, including sectoral one, providing or supporting the access to data, may also support the provision of high quality data for the training, validation and testing. So it's not really a detail uh, to, well, to see that ethics is very important. Requirements for trustworthy artificial intelligence are proportionate obligation on all value chain, chain participants with enhance and promote the protection of the rights protected by the Charter of Fundamental Rights in Europe. Ethics. So ethics is crucial. Artificial intelligence technology and those who interact and are subject to them need to build an ethic by default and ethic, ethics by design regulatory framework on the basis of those principles that you can see here. It's from EU Parliament framework of ethical aspect of artificial intelligence, robotics and related technologies. So, um, it's principally a respect for human autonomy, prevention, prevention of harm, fairness, a, and explicability. Respect for human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness, and explicability. So technical robustness is related to prevention of harm. Transparency of all elements relevant to an artificial intelligence system. The data, the system, the business models must preserve these principles. In the age of uh, persuasive computing, transparency is critical to justify extensive data collection and its benefits to user. As you can see, some uh, principles like diversity, non-discrimination, fairness are also very important in this new order uh, of ethical uh, legal frame. In order to achieve trustworthy artificial intelligence, you must enable inclusion and diversity through the entire artificial intelligence system. And as you can see, explainability in artificial intelligence systems requires that the decision made by an artificial intelligence system can be also understood and traced by human beings. Human in the loop is very important in this uh, ethical uh, framework. So, in the field of research, we can see that ethic in research is a little bit more than that. You can see also fairness and the problem of sources of bias. You can see also reproductibility and replicability as an issue, especially in federated learning. Conflict of interest and integrity are more classical in this, uh, in this field. And I would like to stress, in, in the perspective of federated learning, the importance of the principle crucial in science of reproductibility and replicability. The question and issues related to, to these two principles remain central. How should studies and other research approaches be designed to efficiently generate reliable, reliable knowledge? How might hypotheses and results be made better communicated to allow others to confirm, to refute, or build on them? It's also a uh, low issue, it's an ethical issue, but it's also, uh, it integrates the low, uh, the legal frame of artificial intelligence. So, I just recall that repro reproductible research is research that is capable of being checked because the data, the code, the methods of analysis are available to other researchers.
So the algorithm, for instance. Replicability is obtaining consistent results across studies aimed at answering the same scientific question, each of which has obtained its own data. And uh, in the field of health data, we have more obligation. So as you can see, we have the legal frame of um, the GDPR about data protection. Then you have ethics in general. Then you have ethics in research. And then you have more with ethics in uh, the context of sensitive data like health data. According to the Article 9 of, to Article 9 of the GDPR, healthcare data is highly, I quote, highly sensitive and must be protected accordingly following appropriate confidentially uh, procedures. So processing should be, I quote, necessary for reasons of public, public interest in the area of public health, such as protecting against serious cross-border threats to health or ensuring high standard of quality and safety of health care and uh, medical products or uh, of medical products of medical devices. So we have here a big issue in federated learning in the context of health data. More precisely is the second part, more uh, specifically, specifically the legal issues in federated learning, what sort of issues we have that we don't have at the same uh, intensity with artificial intelligence and data mining centralized, in the centralized manner. The questions are very, very important and very technical and very complex. Who is responsible, for instance, as the training stage? What about liability and property issues? Property of the data, property of the results. What are the, specific, the specificities of the platform and what, the, what is the impact of training? And finally, how to implement the uh, regulation, the European regulation uh, about the data. So, if you see is this uh, this picture, uh, you can you you can see all the problem we have uh, at a legal uh, for a legal frame to build a legal frame for federated learning. And uh, the, the structure, the, the, the scheme is very, very specific. And uh, the difficulty is to identify all the relations, all the legal relations we have between the, uh, the, the actors. So we have an issue in data protection. We have an issue in, uh, about the contractual links. You have an issue about intellectual property about liability in general, and we don't have, at this time, all the answers to this question. So it's very important for us as a jurist, as lawyer, as academic in law, to uh, really uh, study the problem and to answer to this question, and we don't have all the answers uh, about this. And we are, uh, well, studying, for instance, the GDPR compliance in the context of, federal, of federated learning about the participant rules um, between data subject and data controller and data processor. What differences in the context? Of the, other question is the GDPR when it obligates data controllers to provide fundamental, fundamental, funda fundamental rights to data subjects to control over the data. How does it work? What type of contractual relation you can build in this context? 
And uh, finally, what, what's the purpose of data collection? Or what are the, the purposes of data collection? It's the main issue, too, in this context, to, defini to, to define between the different, uh, the different actors uh, what uh, are uh, the, 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 the purposes uh, they have. Is the, pur the purpose is common, is different, uh, we have a different uh, issue in this regard. What data is adequate? How to, how to, what to, to consider the, the limitation? Uh, what is relevant before executing uh, an, an algorithm in this context? All these kind of questions are now on track with uh, lawyers, with academics, and uh, we are trying really to uh, answer uh, technically to all this uh, question. Um, federated learning, processing data in this context may be quite uh, complicated. We have, for, for instance, to determine if training a, mach a machine learning model with federated learning qualifies it as a processing of personal data wholly or partly by automated, automated means, say Article 2 of the GDPR. If we are re really in the context of this definition, the raw training data provided by the data holders qualify as personal data, the operation performed on such data in the federated learning process. And therefore, under the material scope, of the GDPR using, using the raw training data provided by the, cli the client, for instance, an hospital uh, on processing data spatial. And the processing operation performed on this data are likely to qualify as a processing under uh, the GDPR. Training a, mach a machine learning model using the federated learning approach does not necessarily exempt all the processing operations occurring in the federated learning uh, framework from the application of the GDPR. This requires that the processing rests on one of the legal grounds listed in Article 6 I mentioned uh, first um, in this presentation. And to list the purposes of the training and to verify if the purpose is compatible with uh, the purpose for which the data were or originally collected. So it's very complicated to know whether the operation performed on the model updates derived from the raw training data are in the material scope of the GDPR. These updates may, in certain cases, reveal information about the underlying personal training data. This means that they may qualify, they may, it's not certain, they may qualify as data relating to an identifiable natural person, say the GDPR under the Article 4.1 of the European regulation. Well, as you see, the question is very uh, complex and federated learning, it's true that federated learning facilitates compliance with the principles of, for instance, data minimization of Article 5.1 of the GTBR. But the principle requires the data controller to limit the personal training data used to build the machine learning model to what is really adequate, what is really relevant, what is really necessary to achieve the purposes for which those data are processed. So it's not very simple and not very, uh, yes, it's not described in the European regulation. So. Europe, the European institution and the European Data Protection Board built some guidelines to interpret the European regulation with, uh, in consideration of the new techniques um, operators de develop for privacy 
uh, by design um, like federated learning. And as we see regarding the rules, we have some, some, some points more precise in, the, uh, in these guidelines. For instance, a controller must use processors providing sufficient guarantees to implement appropriate technical and organizational uh, measures. All actors shall, in a transparency manner, determine and agree on their respective responsibilities for compliance. All actors, not one. Any processing of personal data by a processor must be governed by a contract, a contract, liability by contract. Very important to build some contractual structure between the actors. Any proceeding of personal data by a processor must be governed by a contract or other legal act which shall be in writing, including in elect electronic form, and be binding. Binding, so a sort of uh, imperativity uh, in this uh, in this context. So the question must be to uh, to know if, in the context of federated learning, every actor is a joint controller. For instance, eh? is the model different from what say? What we can what we can read in the GDPR, the controller alone or jointly with others, the purposes and the means of the processing, the processor processes personal data on behalf of the controller. All these uh, all these articles are not very adequate in relation with federated learning technique. So the GDPR is based on the controller processor distinction. Is this distinction still um, relevant uh, in the context of federated learning? It's a question. And the broad interpretation of the notion of joint control uh, is um, described in the recent ruling of the Court of Justice of the European Union in 2019. And it's a very large interpretation. So. Uh, recent guidance by the European Data Protection Board on the concept of controllers and processors must be known to develop the legal framework. And uh, in the context more specialized in earth data and research, we have very big issues. Um, privacy and performance, for instance, is it compatible? As we see in other presentation this morning, federated learning does not solve all potential privacy issues and uh, will always carry some risks. Privacy preserved, pre preserved, preserved techniques for federated learning offer level of protection that exceed today's current commercially available um, uh, models. However, these techniques may affect the accuracy of the model. And furthermore, future techniques and ancillary data could be used to compromise a model previously considered to be low risk, but it's not. In federated learning system that operate on larger scales, it might be impractical to establish an enforceable collaborative agreement some clients may deliberately try to degrade performance, bring the system down, or extract information from other parties. Security strategies will be required to mitigate these risks, such as advanced encryption of model submission, secure authentication of all parties, traceability of actions, differential privacy, verification system, execution integrity, model confidentiality, protections against adversarial attacks. So it's not very uh, easy. Uh, what about research purposes? Earlier this year, the European Data Protection Board issued additional guidance 
for the application of the general data protection regulation in Europe. In the area of scientific health research, it's very recent, this year. Confirmed that, and confirmed that the informed consent that individuals must provide under ethical standards to participate in scientific research are, is to be distinguished uh, of the general principle of consent in the European regulation. So, as you see, the context of federated learning is very complex and, and the, the European regulation does not really uh, bring all the answers that uh, specialists can see uh, in uh, the application of this principle. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jan. Yeah.